Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I'm Gerald Santiago and we are studying about faith in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious word. Father, we thank you. Your words are truth. Father, we thank you. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will never pass away. Father, your word is eternal. And Father, we pray you teach us your word. Father, we pray you grant us wisdom, knowledge, understanding and revelation in your word, your will and your love. Father, we pray you grant us ideas, concepts and insights. Father, we pray you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father, we pray you show us wonderful things out of your word. Father, we thank you for word in due season. Father, we thank you for answers and solutions. Father, we thank you so much for your uh, mighty hand. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Blessed be your holy name. Father, we pray you stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Father, we pray your healing power. Heal people from all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. And Father, we thank you so much for your mighty healings, signs and wonders. And Father, we thank you, you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We serve a good God. You know, our God is a God of miracles, God of wonders. Our God is El Shaddai. He is a supernatural God, you know. He does supernatural stuff. Miracles are common for God. He lives in the realm of miracles. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, keep releasing your faith for, uh, you know, for miracles in your life, for God to show himself strong on your behalf, for El Shaddai to manifest in your life. Hi. Hallelujah. Doing the impossible. If when you are facing something impossible, that does not mean it's the end of the road. Does, that doesn't mean nothing can be done. A human effort cannot do anything more. But uh, our God is the God of impossible. Our God is the God of miracles. Our God is El Shaddai. Look to Him. Keep your eyes on Him. And He will do something marvelous. You know, I often meditate on um, the Red Sea miracle. And um, as I was... <laughs> meditating on it one day and the Holy Ghost uh, you know, showed this to me until that moment you know nobody ever thought that you could make a way through the sea that thought never occurred to anybody it did not occur to Pharaoh and the Egyptian army that was chasing Israelites it did not enter the heart and the minds of the Israelites who, who were looking to God for a miracle <laughs> Right? It didn't even enter into the heart and mind of Moses. You know, they were there. Right? They were looking to God, expecting a help. But nobody knew that God would actually create a path through the midst of the sea to get them over to the other side. Pharaoh thought, he, he, I got them cornered, man. I, I got them right where I want. They are coming back to me as slaves or are they are going to be dead bodies and become fish food. Right? And then the Israelites are thinking, oh boy, either we can go back quietly as slaves or if we fight, we are going to die. <laughs> and the, their prayer was not exactly in faith. They cried out to God, but then they turned around immediately and started blaming Moses for bringing them to, you know, out of Egypt. <laughs> so they, they didn't have a clue either. And Moses, before God spoke to him, he didn't have a clue either. <laughs> right? But then it was in the heart of God all the time even before the foundation of the world. <laughs> he said, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you what El Shaddai can do, what God Almighty can do. I'm going to do something that never entered the heart of man, that never touched your mind. And God made a new thing. He opened the Red Sea and made a path for the Israelites through the midst of the sea. <laughs> And then he sunk his adversaries in that same sea. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Israelites saw their dead bodies. They saw the end of tyranny in their life. The end of oppression in their life. The end of bitterness in their life. And until that moment, their life was bitter day in, day out. 
and when the Israelites saw the dead bodies of the Egyptians, they saw the end of tyranny, oppression, and bitterness. They knew, okay, that chapter is over in my life. Now I can move forward. I can go forward to the blessing that God has a portion. Um, God has appointed for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. You know, God has a good plan for you. You may not be able to see a way now, but if you will stay in faith, God will show you the way. God will not only show you the way, He will make the way. If there is no way, He will create a way. Hallelujah. Our God makes water flow out of rocks and run like rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Rivers don't run in the desert, but our God makes rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost has presented six doctrines here as the foundation doctrines of Christ. Every Christian ought to learn these doctrines, master them, become skillful in them and apply them, use them and obey them in their life. When a Christian does that, he becomes a strong, mighty Christian. His walk with God will become strong. He will become mature in Christ. He will be a Christian who receives answers from God, who experiences the blessings and tastes the goodness of God in this life and accomplishes the will of God for his life and does great and mighty exploits for the kingdom of God. These doctrines are not just to you know, uh, quench your thirst for knowledge or your curiosity for knowledge. No, these doctrines impact your life in a real way. They, they bring focus, they bring determination, they bring zeal. They impact your life in a very, very real way. That's why we are taking the time to study these doctrines. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. In this particular series, we are focusing on faith. Let's go to Mark chapter 11. Let's read from verse 22. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 22, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Our God is teaching us how to use faith here. Uh, in verse 22, he commanded us to have faith. And then in verse 23, he is teaching us how to release our faith through our words. Verse 24, he is teaching us how to use our faith through prayer. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So, in the previous messages, we have covered quite a bit of ground and uh, we spoke about a variety of things about faith. Right now, we are studying, meditating on this particular verse, verse 24. Let's read that again together. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire. So, we have spoken about desire, how God wants you to have desires and he wants you to come to him in prayer and express your desire to him. He wants you to voice your desires to Him. He wants to fulfill your desires. That's why He has given us prayer promises. He says, ask and I will give you. How much more the Father in heaven will give good things to those who ask Him. God desires to bless His people. God desires to bestow good gifts upon His people. It is God's overwhelming desire. Not just your desire. You know, sometimes people think these are materialistic kind of thoughts. No, my dear brother and sister. God Almighty desires to bless you. To give you good things. 
so that's god's desire and as a result of his desire he has expressed himself in the bible giving us countless promises promise promising us good things and blessings page after page after page so it is your responsibility as a christian to go to god and ask him for your desires hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to god now the next thing we said the second point was that that you should search the bible find the scriptures and promises that talk about your desire the thing that you want and that you you take that and you pray based on those scriptures you need some solid ground to stand on you need a support for your prayer prayer is not just you know just some emotional outburst right and people often talk about praying with tears and nothing wrong with praying with tears you know if you are if you are having a great burden for something and you know you are, you cry out of compassion nothing wrong with that or if you are in deep pain and you cry when you are praying no problem with that right but prayer is not built on tears prayers is built on the word the almighty god's holy written word prayer should be birthed out of the seed of the word of god prayer is the child of the word sown in your heart eh? one of my favorite passages in the bible is in uh, first second samuel chapter 7 second um samuel chapter 7 this is when god sent uh, the prophet nathan to give great promises to david and then david in response to that went and sat before the lord and started praying and look at what he is saying to god and i'm not going to read you the entire prayer take time to study this prayer it will be a great blessing for you and um hallelujah let's read from verse 25 And now O Lord God the word that thou hast spoken concerning your servant notice this what is he talking to God about the word that God spoke concerning David now you need to go to the bible and find out what God has spoken concerning you concerning you in the bible see David heard from the prophet what God spoke concerning him now you need to go to the bible find out the promises that talk about you and what god has promised you what god has given you through christ jesus do you understand this and concerning his house establish it forever and do as thou hast said notice he is saying god do according to your word now i'm going to teach this in detail in in, in a series that i i'm i'm planning to start pretty quickly <laughs> <laughs> but today i just want you to point out uh, point out something notice verse 27 for thou o lord of hosts the god of israel has revealed to your servant saying i will build thee an house right see notice he's saying god you told that you will build me an house see if david chuma went and you know by himself out of his own uh, presumptions and assumptions if he went and prayed god build me a house everybody right <laughs> everybody in my family should be kings the throne should be established in my generation forever if he if he prayed something like this out of his own heart without god's uh, revelation god's word and that that would be either uh, idiocracy or arrogance right <laughs> hallelujah because you know it's not easy to 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 sustain a kingdom in within a family right uh, not many people have you know been able to do that very few right and and that too at a at a cost at a cost lot of bloodshed lot of conniving scheming politicizing all the political games and all that right and how 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 do you be a godly person and to, you know and uh, retain a kingdom how is that possible and god god is showing us how is that possible through david through joseph and people like that through daniel hallelujah so here god is saying god said i will build you a house notice the 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 
words of David here. For thou, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, has revealed to your servant, saying, I will build thee an house. Therefore has your servant found this found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. You said this, and because you said this, I have found it in my heart to pray this prayer. See, the word of God produced that prayer in him. The word of God produced the faith to pray this prayer. The word of God produced the boldness to pray this prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now notice verse 28. Now, O Lord God, thou art that God. And your words be true, and thou hast promised his goodness unto your servant. Notice how often he's talking about what God said. See, his desire and his prayer are born out of what God said. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it. And with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. So notice this. His entire prayer is based on what God said. His faith and his boldness is based upon what God said. The prayer was formed because of what God said. And through what God said. Hallelujah. That's why it is so important to find the scriptures that promise you what God has said about your desire, your want, your need. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, let's, uh, so that's the second point, right? The third one was that, uh, uh, take time to meditate upon the promises that, you know, that you have found concerning whatever you are praying for. Right? Take the time to build those scriptures in your heart. Because you that's how you will get the boldness and the faith to pray the prayer and to believe that God heard you and answered you. In the previous message we looked at that. Because in the prayer of faith, you are not going to believe that God heard you and answered you when the answer manifests in your life. No. You are going to believe that God heard you and answered you the moment you prayed. See, that's what he is saying in verse 24. When you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that it is granted to you. When do you believe that God heard you and answered you and you got your, the answer? When do you believe that? Not after you experience the answer. No, the moment you pray, you say, Father, thank you. That you heard me, you answered me, you have granted me my request. The moment you pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's the prayer of faith. This is a key aspect of the prayer of faith. You cannot, you should not go upon this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. In the prayer of faith, you are praying based on God's word. And you are praying in the name of Jesus. And God has already promised you what you asked for. So, when you go to him in prayer, the moment you pray, he heard you, he answered you, and granted you your request. And you take it by faith. You say, Father, I thank you that you heard me, you answered me, and you granted my request. I got my answer. And when you believe that, you shall have them. The answer will manifest in your life. The answer will come to pass in your life. Faith first, experience second. Say this. Say that with me. Faith first, experience second. First you believe that God granted your request. When you believe that, you will experience the result. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Right? I'm, I'm going to repeat this again because it's important. First you believe that God heard you and granted you a request. Then when you believe that, you will experience the result. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. Now, um, the second thing, the last point that I want to talk to you about is this. 
in some cases the answer will manifest immediately like for example if you are praying for your salvation you don't have to wait 20 years to get saved no you will get saved at that moment let's you know if if you are talking about being filled with the holy spirit you don't have to wait 2 years and 3 months for uh, getting saved no you i mean getting filled with the holy spirit you can get filled with the holy spirit that moment when you pray hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so uh, in some cases healing will manifest immediately but in some cases it will take some time to manifest god heard you god granted you your request but uh, for the healing to manifest in your body for the disease to be completely healed from your body right it will take some time right it does right eh? in some cases it will happen immediately in some cases it takes time same thing with finances when you pray the prayer from the moment you pray till the time the money comes in or the need is met or the you know it it may take some time right and when you are praying for something like a land or a house or some something else something big you know different things from the moment you pray it will take some time for the answer to manifest in your life for the answer to become a reality in your life it will take some time so what do you do in that time see sometimes people they would pray in faith they will believe they got the answer they will believe that god heard them but when it takes some time they they start thinking okay maybe god did not uh, answer my prayer maybe god did not hear my prayer and so they start praying over and over and over and over again for the same thing and uh, no that's not how you pray the prayer of faith no we know through the word of god through the infallible unchangeable eternal word of god that god heard you and answered you so you don't have to go back and keep on praying the same thing over and over again what you need to do from the time you prayed till the time the answer manifests is this first of all continue to read those scriptures based on which you prayed read them over and over again meditate on them because when you do that your faith will remain strong your hope will stay strong you will still you know expect the answer to manifest you believe that you have received it you will start seeing yourself with the answer right so it is very important that you continue to study read and meditate on the word of god until the time the answer manifests until the time the answer becomes an experience hallelujah hallelujah to jesus that's one thing you should do the second thing you should do is uh, keep thanking god that he heard you and answered you let's say you believed for a healing right you keep thanking god that he healed you you may still have that pain in your body you may still see that disease in your body but you keep thanking based on his word in the bible says when you pray according to his word he heard you and he granted you your petitions so based on his word you keep thanking god that he heard you that he healed you from the disease hallelujah right the, the the body the pain may still be there the symptoms may still be there the wound may still be there but you keep thanking god based on his holy word that he heard you and answered you right instead of complaining oh father when are you going to heal me will you hear me did you hear my prayer will you ever heal me instead of whining grumbling and complaining keep thanking god that he healed you right keep thanking god that he answered your prayer keep thanking god that he granted the amount of money that you asked him for keep thanking him oh father thank you so much you granted me the money father i thank you money is coming hallelujah hallelujah to jesus right keep thanking him uh, if you prayed for a house keep thanking father i thank you so much you have granted me a house father thank you you have granted me my desire 
Father, I praise you for it. Ah, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to live in a beautiful house. Father, I thank you so much for a land of my own. Father, I thank you for a house of my own. Father, you are a good God. You gave me my house. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. You know, keep worshipping him. Keep thanking him. Now, some people may think, oh, that's deceiving yourself. That's lying. No, see, if, if I'm doing this by myself, without God and His Word, then that would be fantasy or deceiving myself. That would be, you know, la-la land. Right? But I'm not doing this in my strength. God has promised me the eternal God, the El Shaddai, God Almighty, who never lies, who cannot lie, has promised me. God's Word is more enduring than heaven and earth. Heaven and earth may pass away, God's word will not pass away. So when I am thanking God based on what he said, I am not deceiving myself. I am not um, uh, you know, living in fantasy. No, I am living in faith. I am acting in faith. I believe that God heard me according to his word. So I am going to start thanking him and I am going to thank him until the time the answer manifests. Until the time the answer becomes a reality and experience for me, I'm going to keep praising him. Right? Another thing that you can do is remind God of those promises based on which you prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 25, the Bible says, Put me in remembrance. What do you remind God about? Your faults and your sins? No. No. No, you do not do that. You want to remind God of his promises. See, that's why it is so important to base your prayer on the promises of God. So now you take, uh, you take God's word to God Almighty and say, Father, you said that you would do this. You said you will heal me. You said by your stripes you were healed, right? By the stripes of Jesus you have been healed. Father, you said in your word, I will restore health to thee. Father, you said I will take sickness away from your midst. So, Father, I thank you so much that you healed me. Father, you said when you pray, believe you receive them. Believe it is granted to you. So, Father, I thank you so much that you healed me. Father, I thank you so much you removed the disease from me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you can do that. Right? Remind God of His word and then thank Him for fulfilling His word. Hallelujah! Hallelujah to Jesus! These are things that you can do until the time the answer manifests. One final thing, right? Sometimes, not in all cases, in some cases, in some cases this is more than enough. In some cases the Holy Ghost may direct you to do something. Right? Actions of faith, corresponding actions. Right? The Holy Ghost may direct you to do something. And when he does, do it. See, for example, the woman with the issue of blood said, If I touch but the hem of his garment, I will get healed. So she went and touched the hem of his garment. And she got healed. She, she did what she believed. Right? <laughs> In some cases, you know, I once I was expecting, um, you know, I was believing God to find a house in a particular locality, in when I was staying in Bangalore, and um, the Holy Ghost told me. See, I don't I recommend everybody does that. I did it because the Holy Ghost told me to do it, right? <laughs> because for some people it may take longer to find the house. But for me, when I was praying, the Holy Ghost said, "Go and tell your uh, house owner that you'll be vacating with, within 30 days." So I went to my house owner at that point of time, right? And I told him I'll be vacating within 30 days. And I got my house within the 30 days, the new house. See, I didn't do it on my own. The Holy Ghost told me to do it, so I did it. The Holy Ghost has told me different things at different times. You know, when I was believing for my child, my firstborn, David, um, the Holy Ghost told, ask your wife to do running. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> and I told my wife, you know, the Holy Ghost is saying, she asked me, are you sure the Holy Ghost told you? She, I said, yes. And she did running. Our child was born within a month. <laughs> right? So the Holy Ghost may ask you to do something. In some cases, not in all cases, let me emphasize that, not in all cases, in some cases, the Holy Ghost will direct you to do something. When He directs it, do it. Hallelujah. So these are the four things that you can do while you are waiting to receive the answer. Hallelujah. The first one, what do you do? Hallelujah. You meditate on the word of God that you, uh, based on which you prayed the promises of God. You keep meditating on them so that your faith, your hope, your expectation will be strong. The second step is to keep thanking God as you are waiting for the answer to manifest. The third thing that you do is to remind God of His promises. Not grumble, not complain, don't go to Him and say, Why God, why, when God, when, no. You go to Him and, say, and remind Him of His promises. Right? The fourth thing, fourth thing is, when the Holy Ghost directs you to do something, do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. I think we have at least one more message in this series. Uh, I was thinking to close it today, but the Holy Ghost pointed out that I need to talk about something else. So we will continue this series um, and uh, finish the next thing that the Holy Ghost has put in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.